shining on the stars in glory. Your love is like the wildest ocean. Oh, nothing does compare. about this next psalm we're going to sing. It's a scripture song. It's Psalm 32, verses 1, 2, and 11. And it says, How blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. And I was thinking, man, like, we are blessed, not because of the things that we have or, or I don't know, the things that we can do on our own or the things that we can obtain, but we're blessed because Jesus has paid for our sin. He has saved us and given us new life in his name. Uh, and so we can be glad because of that, right? No matter what's going on, uh, no matter, um, yeah, anything else, we can rejoice and be glad and sing. So uh, I hope when you're singing this, you are glad, you are rejoicing, and you are singing um, because, yes, your sin is forgiven um, and you are blessed. is forgiven whose sin is covered by the blood of the Lamb how blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit how blessed is transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered by the blood of the Lamb. How blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Be glad.
your life and in your love and kindness. Praise me up with Christ and make me righteous. You have brought me back with the riches of your amazing grace and relentless love. I made a life forever with your life forever by your grace. I'm saved. By your grace, I'm saved. And Lord, you are the light that broke the darkness. You satisfy my soul. God, we just are so grateful that we can have that joy and peace in you because you bought um, you bought us at, with the ultimate price, and because of your amazing grace, uh, we get to be um, forgiven and that we get to be your children and made alive in you. Uh, yeah, in Jesus' name, prayer. Amen. Well, we're gonna have some announcements, so you guys can go ahead and have a seat. Happy Valentine's Day, GCL. Today is February 14th, and these are your announcements. Registration for Link 2021 is open at YourSummerMatters.com. The initial on-site training, the Disciple Makers Intensive, will be from May 12th to May 15th, and the project will be in Norfolk, Virginia from May 16th to June 12th, 2021. If you're a Santa Fe student or don't have classes or work in Gainesville between March 6th and 10th, you're invited to take part in our Spring Break Outreach in Raleigh, North Carolina. We will be spending full days in the gospel on the NC State campus. There is no set price yet, but rest assured our Spring Break Outreaches are always super inexpensive. This semester, we will be having a worship night every Tuesday from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. at the GCL house. GCL is starting the Love Your Neighbor initiative to reach the entire city with the gospel. We will be knocking on doors in neighborhoods across Gainesville, praying for people and getting into gospel conversations. If nobody answers, we will leave a door hanger with a written explanation of the gospel as well as a link to your Love Your Neighbor website with the gospel presentation as well as an encouragement for believers to get connected in the fellowship. GCLU Spring 2021 is just starting and it's not too late to sign up for some of our classes. This semester, we have nine new classes being offered as well as three recorded classes from previous semesters on the GCLU website that you can watch at your own pace. Be sure to also check out the training videos page of our GCLU website for a number of training video series complete with an interactive questions form so you can get your questions answer. Most, if not all, of our classes are already started, but that doesn't mean it's too late to register. The men's retreat is only a week away on February 20th from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. at Swanee River State Park. The cost is only $20, but you can save an extra five by registering before tomorrow, February 15th. We will be joined by Seminole Christian Life from Tallahassee, as well as our guest speaker, Tom Short. The retreat includes lunch, dinner, fellowship, games, team building, and fun. If you like camping, you can be on the night before, including snacks and a breakfast for an extra $5. Tom Short will be sticking around post-men's retreat, so stay tuned to find out what exciting things we'll be doing in the following days. 
Those are all for your announcements this week. For more information on any of these announcements, check out GatorChristianLife.com or the info table here at Flavit. Now, take a minute before we move on to pull out your phone and fill out a digital connect card at GatorChristianLife.com slash connect. The digital connect card both helps us get you connected to our church as well as fulfill U.S. COVID requirements. Then keep your phone out and pull up the Discord app on your phone to send your prayer request to the prayer channel. If you're visiting or new to GCL and haven't downloaded the Discord at GatorChristianLife.com, feel free to send your prayer request into 352 641 gcl and your prayer request will be then added to the Discord. Then be sure to pray for other people's prayer requests as they come up on the Discord. Good morning, family. Good morning. So good to be here. Happy Valentine's Day to everyone. It's so great that we have a day to celebrate how God loves us so we can love others, right? Amen. Uh, the world has changed this day so much, but we can celebrate uh, the love that we can have for one another because of Jesus. So uh, I hope you celebrate that today. I hope you feel love today. I love you. Glad you're here. Glad you're with, the, with us. The worship today. My name is Justin. I'm one of the pastors, and we're going through a series on the radical church. And what does it look like to be the radical church? And, and one of those aspects, I think, really comes down to how we handle our finances. Uh, how we handle our finances individually, but even as a church. And if we want to be a radical church, if we want to be radical disciples for Jesus, I think we need to be good stewards of what God has given us. And specifically, good stewards of the finances God gives us. So, and one of the things where uh, I think is key when it comes to in the, being in the church is tithing. Tithing is not something we talk about a ton in our church. Um, Sometimes maybe it's even a disservice. We don't talk about it enough. Um, but it's, uh, it's one of those things we see in the, all throughout the scriptures. In the Old Testament, it's commanded. You see the idea of tithing or giving 10% to support the, the priesthood, to support the, the temple, to support the Levites. Um, and then we see that concept continued on. It's no longer commanded in the New Testament, just like the law. But we see that principle of, of being a generous and joyful giver, generous and cheerful giver. And God's continued that on. And we see that even idea to, to support the leadership and the support the church that you're part of is this idea of tithing and tithing, giving 10%. And I just, uh, I just want to celebrate uh, one of the things we do even as a church is we tithe ourselves. Uh, we see you guys tithing to the church to support our church and make things like this happen, to make things like a, have a tent, to have things on campus, to, to have staff, to have programs, to have the things we do. A lot of it comes from your tithing and your giving to the local church. And then we as a church want to model that same representation back uh, and we tithe. Uh, as well to our region, and we tie to, to missionaries and other people in our region who are doing gospel work. And so I just want to share with you a couple things that we've just this past year gotten to, to tithe our money to, your money to, really, uh, the Lord's money, I guess, is really probably what I should say. And some of those things we've been able to support this past year are um, things in uh, Great Commission Europe through Joe Dunn, um, things with um, 
Mike Cater doing stuff with Run Global and, and India and Reaching the Unreached. Uh, we've been able to help with the Christian Study Center here locally. How many people have been blessed by the Christian Study Center? Yeah. Amen, Dax has. Yeah, a couple. Of, if you've not been there yet, go check them out. They're a great resource here in town, and we just want to continue to support the work they're doing. Um, this past year, we've been able to help Tony Pearson a lot and the work he's doing in our region. And, and he, Tony came down here a couple years ago to bless our church and teach us how to grow better in communication and ministering to one another. Um, but one thing recently we got to help out that I wanted to kind of share with you is, um, is the uh, Pinata Castellanos family. Um, this is a family that our church has kind of adopted. Uh, a couple uh, earlier this, well, earlier last year, uh, two hurricanes went through um, Central America, specifically in uh, Honduras. Uh, and really messed up a lot of um, people's homes and families and whatnot going on there. And we have some sister churches with Great Commission Latin America. And uh, they asked for support, asked for help from the churches here in the States. And we wanted to help them out. So we've sent some money. And specifically, we are helping this family out right here. Um, there's a, a husband and f a mother and two kids. And um, their home was pretty much destroyed. So they, we've helped them out by providing a stove and a refrigerator, beds and sheets, tableware, pots, pans, cups, plates, and a living room set, and uh, some repairs to their home. And uh, this is uh, because of your tithing, because of your giving, we've been able to bless this family um, in La Cruces. Uh, they're in La Cruces there in Honduras. I think that's right. Make sure I say the right thing. Yep. Uh, so I encourage you guys to be praying for them. I just want to thank you on behalf of them for, for your faithful giving and your generous support. And I encourage you, um, as you even challenge yourself, if we want to grow in what does it mean to be a good steward and grow in, in um, even just being living out, being that radical church, it does come down to, to tithing and how we are generous with our money and generous with our finances. So I don't know where you're at when it comes to yourself and how you give, but I do see this principle of tithing and giving 10%, uh, or, and I think really in the New Testament it goes beyond 10%, and prioritizing the local church, prioritizing what God is doing right in your own, own body and prioritizing uh, the people that you're ministered with and ministered by. And so I encourage you, I don't know where you're at with tithing. I know a lot of your students probably don't make much of an income, don't have much coming in, but really building that conviction now. If you're faithful with little, you'll be faithful with much. And I think this is one of the areas that, that God really looks to in our lives to see how we're doing in our maturing in Christ is how we're handling our finances. And it's not just giving to the local church. That's not what I'm talking about. I think it goes beyond that. But I think that's where we prioritize it first. So um, if you, uh, in our church, how you tithe, we don't pass a bucket around or we don't do anything like that. Um, but we, we do encourage you guys to be tithe and be faithful, gener generous. And um, with your giving, you can tithe online. Uh, the website, Gator Christian, you can go to give.gatorchristianlife.com. You can also uh, drop it off at the tithe box at the GCL house at the, if you don't know where it is. Right behind the Holiday Inn, there's a box there. You can drop off your gift or you can mail it in as well if you like. Um, but the easiest way is to, to give online. I just want to make that aware. We also uh, collect sometimes in our house churches. If you collect in our house churches, you're able to, to give there in your house church as well. But I encourage you to think about this area as, and when you're, when you're, as you're maturing in Christ. And as we talk about these different aspects of what does it mean to be a radical church and how that applies individually, I encourage you guys to think about this area as well. Is how are you doing of being faithful and generous with your finances and, the steward and, the, and being a good steward of the, of the gifts God has given you? So, Amen. 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 All right, we're going to go into time of prayer um, before we uh, have a great, uh, great opportunity for you guys today. We've got a great panel of people sharing and uh, sharing a great topic for Valentine's Day. I know a lot of you are looking forward to that, um, but we're going to go into time of prayer first. So I encourage you guys to pray uh, for this aspect. Pray for this family and others recovering from the two hurricanes that went through Central America. And just pray for um, uh, our churches down there, Iglesia Grand Commission. Um, and just the, the ministry they're doing. They've got, so, they've got many churches and doing great work there. And pray for them to be able to minister and bring the gospel to so many families. Pray for our church to continue to be a financial blessing to others. We, we, we are, you guys are generous uh, in your tithing. We've been able to bless a lot of people financially. Um, and uh, it's been encouraging. Even this year, we, we've got um, a larger amount of money that we get to give away because of, I think, because of people's faithfulness. And so kids pray that we continue to do that. And also pray for, for you and other GCLers to be faithful stewards of what God has given us. So take some time. Grab a, one, two, three people next to you. Take some time to pray. And uh, then we'll go from there. So glad you're here.
Testing. All right. Yay. Well, a little bit different format this morning. I'm excited about this panel opportunity. And uh, as we start out, uh, I just want uh, to introduce what we're going to share this morning. Um, when we're in the, the, our series this semester on Radical Church, we wanted to tackle just a few weeks related to relationships. And Justin and Heather did an awesome job last week uh, just tackling just how do you, you build friendships, especially with the opposite sex. And doing that in the context of the church where uh, it's just God gives a, a lot of opportunity and freedom just to, to be the, the brothers and sisters in Christ that God intended us to be. And so we, we step from that into relationships. So like, okay, getting into a relationship, and that's where a lot of uh, people are at in their college years and, uh, and beyond. And, and so we wanted to uh, just take some time to talk about that. One thing I want to mention is that in Gator Christian Life, uh, uh, contrary to any belief that, uh, that GCL has some real uh, clear, this is the guidelines that we follow for relationships. You know, a big part is just really pointing people to Scripture, pointing them to uh, just getting counsel and encouragement, and realize that uh, with each person, uh, we, we really have to process it and own uh, those, those convictions that we're developing right now ourselves. So uh, in doing that, I, I just want to start with a, a, a verse. This is in James chapter 3, verse 17. It says, and this is from the New Living Translation, it says, but the wisdom from above is first of all pure, it's also peace-loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and fruit of good deeds. And so here it also shows no favoritism and always sincere. Just a couple points I wanted to make from this is just, it, it makes a point to say number one priority is that, that wisdom in our life, as we gain w wisdom that I, I trust all of us are, are wanting to pursue, uh, it's first off pure. That uh, our goal when it comes to relationships is not how close to the line can I get, but no, how can I be pure before God? And uh, as well, uh, another point just relates to, uh, I like this peace loving. I think uh, when we talk about relationships, it's easy to, to think of drama surrounding relationships. And I think in, in the church and solid Christian relationships, I think there's, there's a, uh, quite a decreased emphasis on, on the drama that you typically would expect. And that we're working on our hearts personally but it's not like uh, across the board uh, within the church. And just um, lastly, I just want to mention, uh, shows no favoritism, it's always sincere. And I think here's a point that I just want to encourage all of y'all uh, in, even as you hear from our panel this morning, is to develop convictions in your life along this area. Uh, have them founded on the word, get wise counsel, and as, as you're developing those convictions, that there's one uh, 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 translation that talks about without hypocrisy, that you don't uh, have convictions that are uh, situational, that change from person to person that you know and say, well, you know, I, I, can, I can compromise on this uh, conviction because whatever. So encourage you in that. We're going to pursue God's wisdom. And as I do that, we're going to ask this panel different questions, but I also, uh, at the end of the time, um, we're going to field some questions that y'all have, maybe clarification of their answers or additional questions. So make sure you uh, text your questions in uh, as you have them. And uh, we're going to get through as, uh, a number of questions together, but I know this subject is uh, uh, just covers a lot of, lot of areas, so... Uh, Whatever we we don't cover, uh, we definitely want to get in your your text and uh, respond to those. We'll we'll talk about that later. But let me start off. Um, 
tell you what, can y'all just go through and, and uh, tell them uh, who you are, just uh, as a couple. Go ahead. And w- Hi, I'm Adam. I'm Michaela. And, and DTR there, please. Define the relationship. Define the relationship. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm up on this, right? <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're okay. engaged. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. My, uh, my name's Christina. And I'm Ben. And we recently got married about a month and a half ago. Yay. Uh, I'm Lauren Hildebrand. This is John. We've been married for 17 years. We actually met um, on campus in Broward Hall. We were both part of DCL for, Ooh, all right. for a long time. Yay. Hold on to that mic. Okay, because right. I'm going to give you the first question here. So, and, and these actually came from uh, from y'all this past week, and I appreciate all the input that we've gotten. Uh, we got more than enough to cover, so really good questions. Uh, so if I'm a guy who is attracted to a girl, what are the steps you would recommend for me to take if I want to pursue her? I'm going to ask a little more in depth. It says, how does a guy pursue a girl if he doesn't know if she has feelings for him or will give him a chance? Does this require some type of communication before a lot of investment and made by the guy? So, All right. Well, uh, you know, first let me say most of us have been taught what, what these kinds of relationships should look like since, you know, we're very young from television, from uh, Disney movies, right? Um, and the world has many different ideas about this, uh, and God has other ideas. And so it's helpful, I think, to start off by thinking, whatever I know about relationships, let me be open to something very different, because I think what you're going to hear up here is going to be very different. Uh, one thing I'll say is, you know, many marriages today end up in divorce. Um, obviously, our goal here is to help you um, not only avoid that, but help you really have a, a, a prosperous relationship no matter what stage it's in. Um, and God really wants to use your relationship to further his kingdom, to bless other people, um, to, you know, to serve people. Just look very different than maybe what the world says when they say, you know, it's about you and your happiness. And, and you know, happiness and satisfaction comes, but it's only after we pursue God's heart on the matter. So first I'll explain some terms here. Some people say dating, some people say courting. We've only used the word dating when we're talking about um, dating and then engagement and then marriage, simply because either way, I think you need to define what you mean. And so when we say dating, we're talking about a relationship between a man and a woman where the purpose is we're trying to see, we're trying to figure out during this time, should we actually get married? Uh, should we, will our future goals and do our values align and different things like that? Answer some of those smaller questions that may not be appropriate to talk about just as friends. Uh, so the, the question is, uh, what kinds of steps would I take? Um, so the first thing I would recommend is uh, evaluating whether you you yourself are ready to be married. Uh, there's a booklet we're going to mention a little bit more later from a man named Rick Whitney who has some questions you can answer both for men and for women. Uh, but I know before uh, I asked Lauren to date me, I spent probably a year praying about it. Uh, there was a spring break trip we both went on, and I thought, oh, m- maybe God really wants me to pay attention to her uh, a lot more and just evaluate does he want us to be married. So I did that for about a year. Uh, I don't really remember specifically how I prayed, um, but that's, you know, I think that's something that you and God can figure out. I think a lot of it was just God help me one way or the other, you know, maybe align circumstances, things like that. Uh, Maybe they were silly, I don't know. Um, And then also a big thing, you know, the Bible, especially the book of Proverbs is big on seeking counsel. And one thing I'll say, it's really important that you get counsel from especially an older married couple, uh, people who aren't going to have a mutual interest in the person you're interested in. <laughs> that's, I think that's pretty critical. Uh, so 
of course, that's really good to do, asking a pastor. I remember meeting Matt one Saturday morning about six weeks before I was going to graduate. No, maybe it was even two weeks before, something like that. Uh, meeting him on a soccer field because his kids had soccer games, I think. And just asking him, I, was remember, I remember being really nervous about it. <laughs> I don't even remember what he said. <laughs> he said he said something to the effect of, yes, go ahead. <laughs> um, but I just remember that was a way, even though I didn't know Matt real really well, it, it was a way of just honoring him as my pastor. Um, and so I wanted to make sure I did that. Uh, of course, asking your own parents, what they think, especially if they, they know her. Um, and then uh, I also asked Lauren's parents, um, trying to keep it a secret from Lauren. That was really uh, very, I was very nervous about it. I called her house, you know, her mom picked up and I thought, ooh, good, you know, better than her dad, who was really who I wanted to ask. But he was there, he was at, he was at work, and so, you know, her mom, yes, yes, go ahead. <laughs> She didn't even know me, but <laughs> she's very agreeable. <laughs> um, and so, let's see. So, uh, finally, when I did go to ask her about six weeks before, so if we back up six weeks, I realized I'm about to graduate. I better make my move now or else someone might uh, scoop her up. And I'm going to be leaving town anyway. So, uh, Lauren actually had one more year of school. Uh, so finally, I thought, oh, let me be um, a little bit more intentional about it. I would send her some text messages. Um, <laughs> it's kind of funny. We both took this Italian class because originally, um, at least I wanted to do mission work in, in Italy, uh, somewhat similar to what people are doing in Germany now. And so we took this Italian class together, and there was this movie called Life is Beautiful. And it's in Italian, but... The main character calls this woman Principessa, which means princess. So <laughs> maybe lack of good judgment, I would send Lauren text messages with uh, <laughs> just good morning, Principessa, you know. It was, it was probably not a good move, but I realized <laughs> I realized I better I better make my intentions very clear very soon or else she's either gonna be totally grossed out or going crazy, right? So so I did. Um, I, I did finally ask her, and I explained to her that um, she should only say yes if she's interested in following me to do mission work in Italy. Um, let's see. So did I leave anything out? Good. Well, let's, right. Sorry, I'm going to shift gears, <laughs> and uh, you heard from a guy. But what about a girl? What would you do? And uh, Christina, yeah, let me ask. Uh, you about this one. If, if if I'm a girl attracted to a guy, what steps would you recommend for me to take? So from the girl's perspective, I want to start out by reading a verse real quick from Ephesians 4, 22-24. It says, Throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So I think the first uh, big like biblical principle that comes out of that is to focus on becoming more like Christ in your life. And uh, from that, like personally, I took different steps uh, to it. Like the first one being uh, bring those feelings to the Lord uh, and let and just let it all out to him. Like, and a specific prayer that uh, I prayed uh, for this was, if these feelings for this guy are from the Lord, grow them. But if it's not from the Lord, take that, w take them away. Because if it's not the Lord's will, I don't want it. Um, and then the second one just being uh, finding an older woman or finding multiple older women from different stages of life to really uh, speak into your life and provide counsel in that, but even asking them, like, how can I become more like Christ and focus on developing those qualities? Because they definitely can be really honest and uh, share things without a blinded perspective. And then the third one, just being practicing contentment. 
where you're not where you're at and because if you're not content while you're single you're not going to be content while you're dating or while you're married so practicing that uh but through all these uh being patient through this time and knowing that regardless of whether you happen to date someone or not uh these godly attributes that you are developing uh they, they'll have eternal value, and it's going to glorify God, um, which should be the primary motivator through it all. Good, good. All right. Well, good. I'm going to uh, actually uh, move on a couple of steps uh, to an- another question. Any thoughts on liking someone, but they don't follow Jesus? And I'm going to turn that over to our engaged couple here. <laughs> yeah, so um, Michaela has some experience with that, uh, but I do, I do as well. But um, uh, yeah, it's just not it's not ever a, a good idea, really. Um, Paul says in Second Corinthians six um, to not be unequally yoked with uh, an unbeliever, and to um, because to be he compares it with Jesus and and Baal. The, the Old Testament idol, because to do that is like the and a yoke is something that you put on two ox and they pull it, but if one ox is going this way, the other ox is trying to plow the field. It's just unequally yoked, and that's like that's how we live life as Christians is is something that we we live with the mission in mind to to plow this field, right? And um, we just Every day, if we're not equally yoked with our wife or our husband, it it never results in a um, in something good. Uh, so something that we can do is we can pray for this person, or uh, or or just uh, turn it off and, and look for somebody else because uh, it's not not gonna happen. It's just not healthy. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I don't know if it's extending that, uh, Michaela, with family a- as well. You, you, you're dealing not only with the individual, but uh, you're, you're evaluating as well the family. Yeah, that's definitely a big thing. I mean, when you enter in a relationship with somebody, um, and then the purpose is marriage, you'll have in-laws one day, and you're stuck with them as long as you're stuck with him. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> well, true, but... Uh, uh, so it, it is really important, um, but in Genesis 2, you see that the husband will actually leave his family and cleave to his wife. And so while Adam said, hey, if this person's an unbeliever, like that's a deal breaker. Um, I don't think the same line is, same line is drawn necessarily with the family um, because you guys are going to be a family of your own. And if, if the intention is marriage, the end goal is marriage. And there is a lot of hardship with uh, your family's not being on the same page, um, navigating how to honor them. But, like, ultimately, our goal, even in, like, what Justin and Heather talked about, like, we have the great commission to be living for, and even in our marriage and our relationship and engagement, like, our goal is to bring people to Christ through our relationship. And that's the same with our families as well. And so that's been our goal. It's been pretty unifying being able to pray for our families together and, like, that be the focus around them. Um, and I think it's just one more thing that you can be unified in. So no, it's not a deal breaker. Um, if the person is strong and that uh, particularly the husband will leave his parents and cleave his wife, cleave to you. Um, because if they're influenced by their parents, then I don't think that person is strong, whether it's the wife or the husband. Um, you want to be strong on your own. You want to be strong in your relationship and your pursuit of Christ. And so it's not a deal breaker. It's something to think about. Um, but know that it will also cause um, a little bit more navigating. And um, if your goal is to love them and to bring them to Christ, it's going to require sacrifice in your relationship. Um, I know that our relationship has been harder or we've had to wait longer or do certain things a different way because we want them to come to know Christ. But that's because that's the goal is to make your, his name known through your relationship. And so let that be the focus. Um, if you're not in it and you're not going to want to love the other person's family, don't get into the relationship. 
because they love their family. That, like, that's their family. And so you need to be, like I tell, my commitment to Adam is like, I want to be heart and soul for you. Mm. Um, like that's what David, uh, the David's armor bearer says to him in 2 Samuel uh, 4, 17. Like do all that you have in mind. I'm with you heart and soul. And so his heart is for his family. And so my heart is going to be for his family too. And, and my family as well. So, that's good. yeah. Thank you. I'm going to pass on down to uh, to Hildebrand. And this question is, there, there are many circumstances where you know that you and another person have mutual interest in one another. Whether you've had to have conversations about it or just it's super obvious. So do you believe it's <laughs> wrong to have had I'm interested in you conversation before <laughs> entering into a relationship? Yeah, that's a great question and probably, you know, makes for a great movie plot. Um, <laughs> but that's not what we're looking for here. Uh, so I would say right or wrong is that right or wrong is really maybe not the focus. I mean, maybe I could say it's right or wrong and it would take a long time maybe to defend that from the Bible. But I would really ask uh, is how we pursue one another. Is that really best for maintaining healthy relationships within our church? And, um, you know, as the Dykeses had talked about last time, we want to not show partiality to um, to others. And so we were, re of course, really want to be careful about doing that. Um, in this kind of situation, I would say, you know, one question to ask yourself before you in attempt to engage in that kind of conversation is just, why do I want to do that? Um, you know, maybe it's an issue of, do you just need to trust in God to do something? Um, for example, Psalm 37, 4, I think it is, says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Uh, but, you know, doing that kind of, having that kind, kind of conversation, I think implies some level of commitment that's not really defined, but you're implying it maybe. And that could be a bad thing, you know, kind of, in a way, I think short circuits some of the process that I had described earlier, which... You know, that's the, the process is not in the Bible. I think that's just things that people like myself and other people have just decided is maybe a good way to go about it, a wise way, uh, you know. Um, and certainly there's there are different opinions on that, but you don't want to short circuit at least a thoughtful, a well thought out process and counsel and prayer and all that. Um, I, if any of you here were uh, took electronic circuits or anything like that, you know, the TAs always warn you about short circuiting things and it always damages the equipment. They get really uh, hyper when that happens. And sometimes it, it causes fires and you definitely don't, <laughs> you know, you don't want to do that in your relationship with another brother or sister. Excuse me. Yeah, I think timing is the, the key in all of that. You know, John, actually I like John. For my freshman year, we didn't start dating until the end of my junior year, and I think he liked me for a couple years, too, but he knew it wasn't a, um, it wasn't the right time, and I think if I had known, even though I liked him, and I, I, I didn't know, but he obviously, we enjoyed each other's friendship, um, but I think if I had known anything officially, it would have disrupted what I was doing, you know, as far as being involved with other women, or reaching out to people, so there's a right timing for everything, I think that's really key. Thank you. I'm going to ask um, our newlyweds here this next question, and it relates to um, uh, you're going through a relationship. Uh, how have you dealt with with boundaries? And it's, boundaries are not just physical; they're they're emotional, uh, time management, different things like that. Uh, things that uh, uh, practically. What has helped y'all to, to stay on track? So through our dating and engagement season, uh, one thing that was recommended to us that we even recommend to anyone that may be starting to date as well is having a boundary sheet uh, where basically you just are together and we write down different boundaries that you want to keep to, whether that be physical, emotional, spiritual boundaries, uh, just all those areas, but uh, just what's important as you're like 
thinking through those is as together there might be things that maybe you never thought about uh, on there that you might not know how it might affect your boyfriend or girlfriend um, like how uh, is holding hands going to affect this other person or on the emotional aspect like if I say I love you how is this going to affect that other person or uh, whatnot but it's one thing just to I think even like be thinking about these boundaries but uh, I think another radical step uh, an extra step to take would be to share that boundary list with others, maybe another couple uh, or so, but uh, sharing that with others uh, and having those people keep accountable to you because uh, just personal experience, like boundaries are uh, just these different things are hard sometimes to keep, but having someone uh, that you know will keep you accountable to them uh, will help you deep. Thank down. you. Yeah. And I know, uh, as you mentioned, uh, actually we've got a, a um, a link for you uh, as far as those uh, that boundary sheet which uh, I think it's there it is uh, <laughs> bit, bit.ly slash GCLR seat uh, which is for Gator Christian Life the Radical Church yeah it should say Radical Church uh, resources so it's uh, RC resources. So there you go. All right. Yay. But on there, we've got a couple of documents. And, and again, I would just encourage uh, uh, what y'all mentioned. It can seem pretty radical, which that's what we're about up here. Writing down your boundaries, but it really makes you think through them and, uh, and make sure you're on target. And, and it's not something you're saying, did we really say that or not? Well, no, it's written right here. And then to share them with others, I think that is awesome. Another uh, resource that John mentioned just a little while ago related to uh, a booklet that I know I've gone through with different guys who are, who are uh, preparing for uh, what it would be to be, be married personally, regardless of even if there's a girl out there in the future. You know, that, that they're thinking, I want to be ready. And it's a great booklet. It just asks 10 questions of guys and then also 10 questions of girls. And it's on that resource as well. So uh, feel free to, to jump on that. Let's, let's field some questions that uh, we have from you all. Hold on just a second. I'll get that. Um, and I appreciate all your answers here. Really Just, yeah, I'll use this one. Okay. Oh, okay, there we go. Okay. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, good. We can keep going on. A uh, couple we've, we've got here. Um, um, ooh, here's a good one for our engaged couple. How do you know he or she is the one? <laughs> Yes. Yeah, that's a that's an easy answer. So, uh, <laughs> so if you've met Michaela, you know how awesome she is. Uh, oh wait, wait, this is for everybody. Not just, easy um, well, I can speak experientially. Uh, that would be really easy. Um, a lot of it really was when I saw Michaela's heart for Jesus and for others. Uh, that that's the first thing any man should look for in a wife and any wife should look for in a dude. Um, I think, yeah. Um, she, she exemplifies that really well. <laughs> um, 
I am super attracted to her. That's another thing that is really important. Um, and just seeing all these things come together in, in somebody that has a lot of the same interests, who would be willing to follow me anywhere that I go, and who, um, who does want to go and chase after uh, the Lord's mission with me is, uh, is super powerful. And um, when all those things came together, that's when I knew she was the one very early on. Well, I'm going to ask another question of uh, the Shermans, and this one is, um, now, how do you go about uh, navigating your a relationship when it looks like your, your plans diverge? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think, at least for me, I see the whole reason of dating is to see whether or not, like, oh, is this person, would this person be good to marry? Um, and if that's, like, the reasoning behind dating, that means that dating is a, is a success when it answers that question, whether it's yes or no, whether or not that ends in marriage or breaking up. I think it's important to know how important, like, a specific life plan is if these things are diff uh, diverging. Uh, for example, if you're like, oh, I was just growing up, I thought I'd move to Africa, and this is, I think that'd be really cool to be a missionary, and the person you're dating is like, oh, no, I definitely would want to be here in the United States. If that's like a smaller life plan, I think it's totally okay if your life vision changes um, to accommodate that person or vice versa. Of course, you want to make sure that you're actually sitting down and having this conversation, and not just thinking, oh, yeah, this person's accommodating, they'll change. Um, but if that preference or if that divergence is more of like a conviction that you've built uh, between you and the Lord, like, oh, ever since I was young, I just had a calling on my heart. Like, I need to go to Africa to be the voice of, you know, God to preach the gospel to these people. Um, but the person you're dating doesn't want to do that for whatever reason. Um, if going into marriage would cause you to either have to compromise and be either just struggling in your life daily or even like sinning against um, God just because you have that conviction, then I think that it, that would be a reason to maybe marriage is not a good um, thing for you too. And I think it's, yeah, once again, um, making sure that you're evaluating uh, your decision based on would this glorify God or am I just, is this just self-interest? Um, and so, yeah, uh, the whole purpose of dating, I see it, is to work through things that would cause tension in a marriage, whether that would be something that's, oh, we can figure this out beforehand, and yeah, we, this, we can make this work, or something that this would cause such strain that maybe this person isn't the right person for me. So, it never also never hurts to be seeking counsel and be praying about that. So that's what I would say. Great, great. Thank you. And our last question... Uh, for our veteran couple here, yes, uh, it relates to, um, can you speak to the, the different approaches to getting into a relationship or approaches to dating? Uh, you know, there, there's things like uh, dating apps, online dating, uh, blind dates, getting involved through the church, um, yeah. Go ahead and answer that. Um, uh, the first thing I thought of when I um, hear this question is just the different stages of life that you could be in. I have friends who are in their 30s, who are single, working full time, and then there's you guys, um, most of you. Um, there may be some of you fall in that category here, but most of you are uh, single. You're around a lot of single people. Um, you are just have many opportunities for social interaction. As you get older and you're still single and you're working full time, um, you still of course wanna be involved in a church body and still have those opportunities, but they definitely are less, people have less time. And more people, your peers are getting married, they have families, they're busy, so your circle kind of shrinks. So, you know, you guys are, um, uh, I mean, I would say the best way um, 
is uh, to get to know someone is within a community and you guys are in that kind of situation now and of course you can be after you graduate but when you get to know someone within a community and see how they interact not only with you but with um, like for John I we happen to live on the same dorm floor um, I got to see how he interacted with all kinds of people whether they had something to offer him or not or whether they were likable or not or you know whatever it was he um, I got to see how he interacted with different kinds of people and that helped me to know him more than I would have in more of a, a you know a planned setting like going on a date whether it's a blind date or a date through um, an app or whatever or a website whatever it is um, would we could we go so far as to say those things are wrong of course not but there's um, uh, um, I do know people who are older who have used those things because um, it is a way for them to get to know people but um, I think it's a matter of, of faith, um, you know, how you go about that, and it's not for us, I think, to judge how someone else goes about it, but, um, you know, I, I think uh, one thing I, that may be undergirding all of it is, um, I know when I became a Christian my senior year of high school, up until that point, I was so concerned about what people thought of me and my image and who I was friends with, and I don't know if you guys can relate, but when I became a Christian, I was so glad to be free from that. And you see that everyone has value, um, no matter what kind of person they are. I didn't categorize people the way I did before. And it was very freeing to me to approach, um, to just have that, that pure heart that you can seek, that uh, ask God for you to have toward every person. And if you're, I was attracted to John, but I think that um, that change, that shift in perspective for me really helped me know how to act around um, people of the opposite gender and um, anyway I hope that that makes sense but thank you. Uh, one thing I'll say is uh, Dominic Baroni uh, met his wife uh, through I guess you could say a blind date and often you know it, I wouldn't be quick to discredit the idea um, because often people know you better than you know yourself they know your strengths and weaknesses and they you know if you have uh, mutual friends, they know the other person's strengths and weaknesses, and sometimes, you know, in other cultures, it's more common where the parents put two people together, um, and so you definitely don't discredit that. Uh, we also, I know, have uh, an alumnus who met his wife, um, with one, uh, Robert Duhaney's. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> uh -huh. He's in the commercial, actually. I forget which... Hopefully yeah. he's still doing well. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are. They are. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you all so much for your openness, willingness to, to really share with the rest of us. And I know there was a number more questions, actually uh, several more that were given uh, this week, and, and you all have typed in some as well. And Ari talking with uh, this group here, Knowing, anticipating that there would be uh, more to cover, uh, and and just even hearing how well uh, the Zoom call last week went with the Dicuses, we went ahead and decided to uh, provide a Zoom opportunity for y'all. It'll be tomorrow night, and it'll be at uh, eight thirty to nine thirty. There's the the link, and if uh, you want to join us, we'll all be on the call, and uh, just take. Your questions, if you want to submit them anonymously, you can do it at the, uh, the number that's there. We will be fielding those questions as well. But if you just want to ask them outright uh, during that call, you're welcome to do that as, as well. So thank you. And as the uh, panel, y'all definitely give them a, a big round of applause. <laughs> thank you. Uh, all right. And as uh, they, they head off, yeah, <laughs> they head off, grab your stools, the worship team comes back up. Uh, let me close this in, in prayer here for this time. Lord, I, I just really thank you for the opportunity to really grow in what it means to, to have wisdom in the area of, of relationships. Lord, uh, I pray for each one here that we would be developing solid convictions Convictions that will last us a lifetime that will really honor, glorify you. I thank you for being in a that allows us to.
to, uh, to build friendships, to see relationships that are awesome examples, and uh, to, to be able to follow that. We thank you in Christ's name. Amen. All right, we're going to sing a few more songs. So if you guys want to stand up with us, you are welcome to. And we'll go ahead and get started. Very charming.
you won't relent. You won't relent until you have it all. My heart is yours. You won't relent until you have it all. My heart is yours. You won't relent until you. You won't relent until you have it all. My heart is yours. I set you as a seal upon my heart, as a seal. Until you have it all.
God, until we are all yours, you owe us that much, that you would send your son to die for us. Thank you that we get to know, um, know this love, God, um, that is more jealous than anything, um, God, that is more stronger than anything. It is the reason we get to love one another, God, it's because you first loved us. Um, so we are thankful, and we just worship you today and throughout the rest of this week. We love you. In Jesus' name. for singing with us and worshiping with us. Thank you to the panel. That was awesome. Um, don't forget, there is Publix Goods over there. And for all you men, if you haven't signed up for the men's retreat, I heard it was going to be bomb, so you better sign up. <laughs> Have a good week.